Hello, my savory drippings. It's Carla, and I'm here again in my kitchen today with one fantastic recipe from Where Cooking Begins. Today, I am making rack roasted chicken with gravy potatoes. In this method, you are actually going to put the chicken directly on your oven racks. I know, it sounds crazy, but we spend so much time talking about the roasting rack and lifting the chicken up or doing it on a cooling rack above a thing because of airflow. Well, actually, the only way to really get amazing airflow is to just have that chicken hanging out on the rack air is moving all around it you are getting the most optimal browning and because you're in that setup with the rack what i decided to do was put a pan of potatoes directly underneath so while the chicken is roasting all of the deliciousness is dripping off of the chicken and down onto the potatoes and they get filled with like the most delicious chicken jus so it's like a chicken gravy when it's done i love this method i think it's going to change the way you think about roasting chicken and frankly, your oven racks will never be the same. A big thank you to a brand that has elevated my home experience, Brooklinen. I have been sleeping on Brooklinen sheets for actual years and I've outfitted my boys' rooms with them too. Sheets that last a long time and get softer with every wash is critical for a good night's sleep. Brooklinen just launched a bunch of new colors and patterns on their website and I can't wait to take a look. I like to keep my bedroom pretty neutral, but I'm also not a super matchy matchy person. So a mix of colors and patterns can totally work on the same bed. I'm going to show you two of my favorites. First is the Washed Linen Hardcore Bundle. These sheets are 100% linen and made in Portugal. They are super light and breathable, perfect for your hot sleepers. And I also love how snug they make me feel. Next we have the classic hardcore sheet bundle with the classic percal sheets. These are breathable, 270 thread count weave for those five star luxury vibes. You can shop for the classic or linen hardcore bundles without even getting out of bed. I do some of my best work surrounded by cozy pillows. Because Brooklinen loves you so much, they're offering $20 off any purchase over $100 exclusively for my audience. Click the link in the video description and use code Carla Lolly Music at checkout to claim your discount. Trust me, your sleep sanctuary is about to get so much better. Don't bring your phone into bed, you'll sleep a lot better too. The first thing I'm going to do is season this chicken with like my favorite sort of basic chicken dry brine, which is a combination of oregano and paprika. Oregano and any chili like together just delivers for me that real supermarket rotisserie like herb and spice chicken flavor. I totally get that from the oregano and the paprika. The paprika also gives like the most beautiful color and I'm just mixing together the oregano and the paprika so I can put them on together. This, if you wanna do about an hour before you're planning to roast your chicken, you could put the spice on, preheat your oven, scrub your potatoes, you know, give it about an hour to kind of set. But if you're thinking about Sunday chicken, on Saturday, just do this the night before, pop it in the fridge and like you're even better for it. So I'm gonna season with salt first. You can check the chicken package to see exactly what weight your chicken was at. And then you wanna do about a teaspoon per pound. Or if you don't feel like touching a chicken package, just season it thoroughly. Make sure you season inside the chicken. And if you have like a couple sprigs of rosemary or some thyme or whatever lying around and you wanna kinda clean up your herb drawer, throw those in too. But anything you put in the cavity flavors the chicken from the inside. Like I'm flavoring the skin when I season the outside. And if you get skin in every bite, sure, it's gonna be very well seasoned. 
but you want the meat to be flavored as well. And that is happening from inside the cavity. And this is also like especially beautiful paprika. I just saw something. What was I watching? And the person said, you know, if you like to wash your chicken before you season it, like you don't have to, but you totally can if you want to. And I was like, don't do that. <laughs> the only thing you should do is like pat the chicken dry because not only are you not doing anything when you rinse the chicken, you are inviting like chicken juices to just fly all around your sink, all around your counter. And it's just not something we want to be doing. Put a little bit what's left of the spice in the cavity. And then we're gonna do my patented chicken dance to pick up anything left on there. Here, getting into the thigh gap. I'll just chicken dance all over here. Great, so now my chicken is prepped. She's cute as a button. Now that I've seasoned it, I washed my hands. The last thing I'm gonna do is just tie the legs together. I'm not a big trusser. And honestly, this is optional, but it does give the chicken um, a nice shape and it helps it cook evenly. So however you wanna do it, a little loop. So now she's cute, she's compact, she has a great shape. You could tuck the wings if you want to. I really like crispy wing tips, so I'm not gonna do that. And now I'm just gonna let it sit for an hour or as long as I want to before popping it into an oven at 325. The gravy potato part of rack roasted chicken with gravy potatoes is some waxy potatoes. These I think are Yukon Golds. You can use any potato that you would roast or even a potato that you like to steam because it's kind of gonna be the best of both worlds because it's getting showered with delicious chicken juices and it's in a pretty low oven. So I really think any type of potato works here, even a larger potato like a russet that you wanted to cut into big wedges like oven fries, that would work too. So these are going in. I scrubbed them, I did not peel them, obviously. And I'm gonna add just a splash of water to the pan. And that's so that these don't start drying out and possibly charring before enough time has passed that fat and juices start rendering. So just enough water to like cover the surface. And you can use a casserole dish here. You can use a cast iron skillet like I am. You can use um, any skillet that can go into the oven. So stainless steel as well. And then I'm just gonna season these with salt and pepper. Keep in mind that the drippings from the chicken are also seasoned with the paprika, with the salt and the oregano. So it is possible that this could get a little salty if you truly season the potatoes with as much salt as you would normally do. So just hold back a little. And then all of the fat that they need is coming from their friend, Mrs. Chicken. She needs a little fat because this is a dry spice and because I want to get things going and I want browning and I want crisping. So this is just a drizzle drazzle amount of oil to get the party started. And I'm just focusing on the parts of the chicken that are facing up to the heat element. So I'm gonna put the potatoes in first, in the middle of the rack. And once that rack is in, it gives me a good visual landing for where I need the chicken on the rack so that it's sitting directly above this skillet. The chicken is nice and fatty, so I'm really not worried about it sticking, but as an extra precaution, you can use vegetable oil or just a little bit of Pam on the oven rack to prevent any sticking. And now I'm gonna pick the chicken up. That looks perfect. The chicken's centered right over the pan. The drippings are gonna drip onto the potatoes where they should be. And at this point, we just wanna get things going, get those juices running, and then have a look. It is chicken removal time, which because of the way this chicken is cooked could be a little bit of a delicate operation. It's so tender and folly a party that the only danger here is that it could fall apart as you remove it. 
there's also a lot of juices inside, so I'm gonna tip it so that it doesn't all just fall out. But that went great. And while I'm here, I'm gonna grab the potatoes. Oh, chicken dripping, gravy potatoes. These have been in for a couple of hours. There's no question in my mind that they are cooked all the way through. You can see all of the juices. If while you're cooking your chicken, the potato situation looks a little dry, just add another splash of water down there, which I think we did do. And then, yeah, these are just like, like butter. Gorgeously, gorgeous. If I were to temp this chicken, it would be way over the 155, 160, 165 that you have been trained to cook your chicken to. That is intentional. This time temperature method is based on this recipe for faux tisserie chicken that I developed a bunch of years ago. And the idea is not to get to like a hot, juicy 165, like tight protein situation. The goal is really about the rendering, the thinning out of the skin, the creating all of these juices that go down below. So the temperature of this chicken is probably above 200. That doesn't mean it's dry. That just means the texture of the meat is gonna be different. And then the payoff is also just in all of this browning and the caramelization and the gorgeous wing tips and like the happy, the happy union Aww. that has happened. Even though it roasted at a fairly low temperature, I'm still gonna give it a second to rest before I carve it. And in the meantime, I'm gonna get the potatoes out of here and deal with this gravy. I'm gonna strain this. I wasn't going to, but now looking at it, like there's some pieces of chicken protein that are not appealing to me. Even if you weren't straining the gravy from the gravy potatoes, um, you're still gonna pour it off into a measuring cup because there's a good amount of fat here. And like any pan drippings, I just wanna, I'm not gonna like go crazy taking all of the fat off because as we know, we love fat in this house. But I don't want it to eat greasy. So this has like a lot of cracked pepper, a lot of seasoning, some jubbly bits. And it's pretty easy to tell here like right below the half cup line, um, that's that layer of chicken fat. So if you have one of those like weird gravy boats that has the extra spouty, you can use that. I'm just gonna like tilt this and spoon it into a bowl. And if you wanted to, if you had schmaltz, actually I had a little schmaltz. I could have drizzled the chicken with schmaltz instead of olive oil, just wasn't thinking. So I'm just gonna keep these warm and saucy for a minute. Oh my God, it's so crispy. No, oh, okay. I expected more. <laughs> I'm gonna take the twine off of the legs. Just get out of her girdle. I mean, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm hardly gonna need to use a knife. This is how like shreddy, pulley a party this is. This is like the greatest savory tea bag <laughs> I've ever seen. You could put this in the bottom of a cup of boiling water and drink it. I bet it would be really, <laughs> that's demented. Wood drink. I'm just gonna release a drumstick. So if you've ever had trouble carving a chicken, it's not gonna be an issue here. Chicken sheet of delight. Mmm, mmm, chicken cracker. Okay, so now I'm going right next to the breast. When a regular roast chicken, it's still really tight in the joint and it can sometimes be hard to figure out where to cut, but because this is like so relaxed, the proteins are so shreddy, everything kind of moves and you can see exactly where you need to go, which is kind of nice. So positioning the knife right on the side of the breast down there, and then you kind of want to stay right on this side too. It's just like pulling back. See, that's your whole thigh with like a blanket of crispy skin. And if you wanna see, so how tender this guy is, like I like to take the wings off. It's just pulling off, it just pulls off. I can hear you screaming through your devices telling me that this is dry, 
but it's not. Just because something is shreddy doesn't mean it's dry. Like think about pulling meat off of a pork rib or a brisket. It can be shreddy without being dry. On the back, I did not get the oysters because my drumsticks just pulled right off. So the oyster is just what sits in the back of the hip joint, I guess. Another oyster on this side. And then, yeah, you could be picking at this carcass for a while. Save it, don't throw it out, enjoy it. I'm gonna clean this up <laughs> and make a plate. So for chicken Sunday dinner, I think all you need to go with this is a simple salad. I have just some watercress. You can use any kind of greens that you like. And of course the house favorite nutritional yeast vinaigrette, which if you haven't made, you have to make. And if you do make, or when you've made, I do recommend the squeeze bottle for easy dispensing. Truly the greatest dressing in the land. If it's not in the house, people get upset. A little salt. Little peps. And now just to finish off the chicken, if you want to pass the gravy at the table, that's up to you. You can dress beforehand. You could do both. Last little bit. Yum. My favorite pieces are thighs, which I'll take my roulade. And a nice potato. There's like lots of chicken juices. I'll take that oyster. Thank you very much. And then a wing. That to me is like the perfect pieces. Fatty, nice expanses of skin, things to nibble. I'm just gonna give a little squeeze of lemon. It's gonna brighten up all those rich, delicious flavors, the long cooked flavors, the fatty flavors. A little flaky salt, peps. Ooh, hold on, hold on. Stop the presses. A little more juices. Mm -hmm -hmm. I'm excited about the potato. Mm -hmm. This is everything I'm looking for in my chicken sundae. Can you wait, Margie? Mmm, 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 mmm. <laughs> mm. I'm going straight for the wing. Mmm. Mmm. Wing tips forever. Don't throw them away. Don't clip them off. Touch. <laughs> Go down. Look. Up. Good job, Marty. That's it. Margaret and I are going to enjoy our Sunday evening now. Last little bit of wing. I hope you will enjoy rack roasted chicken with gravy potatoes for all of your Sundays to come. Next we have the classic hardcore. <laughs> next we have the classic hard, next, next we have the classic hardcore cotton sheet bundle. Was that right? Sheet 